So at Oklahoma Soon is hosting an awesome weekend event for recruits called the Heisman Hangout. Shout out to Jolie Ailey for putting together this so quickly. I mean, she just started the job a couple months ago and she's put together, I heard, a fantastic event. Especially some parents love what Oklahoma has to offer and what they've done to um, really impress them. And so I want to dive into some of the players that pulled up and some of the big names that we need to keep our eyes on because we got one commitment out of the weekend. We expect two more this week. And hopefully we can round that out with uh, maybe one or two more of the key players we truly want. So we'll dive into that. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank you for pulling up to the channel. Let's dive into the Heisman Hangout weekend for recruits that looks huge. Now, what's cool thing is, let's add to that, is we saw a Heisman Trophy winner pulled up. Sammy Boy, Sam Bradford, he pulled up, showed some love, and uh, of course the staff and the team and the coaches are excited to have him back involved with the program. You know, Sammy is known for just, you know, not really being out there. He's very quiet and coy and, you know, he just does his own thing. And so it looks like he's gonna be a little bit more involved. We hope to get more because dude's a legend. It's always great to have legends pull up. And so let's talk about some of these players. There's, there's, there was a lot of 25s, 26s, and 27s that pulled up for this event. But I'm gonna jump into mainly, we're gonna talk about just the 25s, right? The ones coming up for this current class, because I think those are the most critical ones. We'll talk more 26 and 27 when those are considered real years, as in like recruitment is done for 25 for the most part, or we get a 26 commit, which I think we're gonna get one soon, but there's a few names that pulled up. And I think this is, here's a couple of them that I saw post some uh, tweets out that they pulled in. If you haven't checked it out, Colin Kennedy over at Sooners Illustrated for 247, he produced a list, shout out to CK. He's always, you know, friend of the show, always pulls up and provides some great conversation around OU Sooner Ball. But he posted a list, and so I'll put it in the link below. If you are a subscriber, please go support him and what they're doing at Sooner Illustrated as they are doing some fantastic reporting. But he put together a list of the players that are in town. And a few of them have started posting, of course, you know, their, uh, their thoughts on the event and just, you know, family pictures. And so one I want to talk about is Dawson Merritt, right? Dawson is a linebacker out of Kansas. His dad, David, is the secondary coach for the Kansas City Chiefs. He has five rings, four with the Chiefs, one with the Giants. He was a, one of the secondary coaches when the Giants won the uh, Super Bowl over Tom Brady and the Patriots. And so... He came through. He's one player that we are heavily targeting, right? Four star, top 100 player in the country. And he's considered, you know, a top minimum 15 linebacker in high school ball. But the fact of the matter is, he's a top 100 player, consensus and composite. Everybody wants this kid. And as of right now, I mean, there's a lot of leans to a few different places, but it sounds like he enjoyed himself. He's 6'3, 205. He is a player that we want at linebacker, right? He fits what Brent Venables is trying to do there. And hopefully Zach Alley can go in there and close the deal, right? This will be his first potential win. I mean, of course, probably a big assist from Venables, but he pulled up. It was like he enjoyed himself. I saw him put something on his Instagram that he was in town watching, of course, practice and just kicking it. And so I'm assuming Oklahoma has done what they need to do to impress him. And he's one player that I feel like we need to get our hands on. So you go from him, one of the local players that I saw recently that popped up that I think is one that Oklahoma really wants to get their hands on is uh, Anthony Ugamoro. He is the offensive lineman out of Elgin, Oklahoma, by way of North Carolina. He just moved here. And the cool thing about Ugamoro is that now he's got Oklahoma and Oklahoma's been one of the teams that have been heavily in pursuit of him. He's not really rated anywhere. He's about 6'4", and a six, four and a half interior offensive lineman, roughly about 300 pounds. But he's one of those players that haven't really done a lot of camping. But everybody's starting to see him, right? When I went and saw his list of teams, I mean, he's got the Tennessees of the world, Oklahoma's, Houston's. He's got... Um, He's got Missouri on him, North Carolina State, North Carolina. Of course, the local teams, they definitely jumped on when they saw him. But when I saw that K-State, Tennessee, Oklahoma jumped on board, made me say, okay, he's somebody to keep my eyes out for. And when I saw him play basketball, then I was like, oh, yeah, he's definitely somebody that we're probably going to look at because at his size, he moves very, very 
very well. And so he's one of those that would be a great potential project for Coach Bill Beatonbow and good depth, right? You need to just have really good depth and solid players. And he looks like somebody that's going to do nothing but move up the charts as he continues to develop. And so he's one of those players. He's His commitment is coming up uh, in May. He had tweeted out that he has like a May 10th commitment set. And so because of that, I'm sensing that Oklahoma is trying to figure out how they can go ahead and win this battle. So he's a good one. Also on that, a couple of other guys that pulled up, you've got the secondary, which is going to be really big in, in Oklahoma, trying to figure out exactly what direction we're going to go. From there, you had like a Cortland Guillory pulled up, Kobe Sellers showed up, Sonota Stewart, as well as Malik Hawkins. And now you all know Malik Hawkins will be doing his commitment coming um, on Wednesday. So the 10th at noon and all signs are pointing that he's going to join his brother at Oklahoma quarterback, Michael Hawkins and be a sooner. So if that's the case, that's one corner. And I'm sensing Oklahoma's probably going to take no more than two in this cycle. You may end up getting a third if there's someone that just jumps out. But right now we got one spot and all signs were initially pointing to Kobe sellers being that person, but Courtney Guillory loves Oklahoma. And he said it in his own words, it's between Oklahoma and Texas as far as who's going to get his pledge. And so if that's the case, Oklahoma's got some work to do. And I don't sense that's a bad thing. I think Oklahoma needs to, uh, you know, really evaluate what they want. You know, Michael Hawkins is nice size. He do. He's what, 6'1", 6'2", in size. And I've always liked Kobe Sellers. I've I've watched him, you know, he's about 5'11"-ish in in size. And for Kobe, you've got Kobe. He's top 150 in the country. It's him. Him and Cortland are both being courted heavily by Texas, too. So Oklahoma is basically battling the competition. But Kobe's got offers from Michigan, Alabama, Texas A&M, right? He's got offers from, like, a lot of the big schools. You got Auburn, Florida, Florida State, Georgia, LSU, Miami, Oregon. He's got the big list, right? And so that tells me, okay, I think Oklahoma is, of course, going to be pushing him and pushing Cortland to one of them two to make a decision, right? And Cortland, his, his offer list isn't too much of a slouch either, right? He's got some of the nice teams like Texas A&M, Tennessee. He's got Kansas. You know, Lance Leibold is doing a fantastic job there. You know, he's got Arizona and he's got Oklahoma and Texas, right? And so, of course, it'd be great for Oklahoma to steal him away from Texas. But at the same time, and then with Cortland's size at 6'1", basically 180, we've got to decide which one of these directions we're going to go right but because they're putting on this event man it seems like they got they got a good chance the good thing is oklahoma put together a nice event that looks like it's gotten them impressed got some of these kids you know sold on the idea of checking us out and it was a quick like i said it's a quick event fantastic job done by the the director of recruiting and that staff and put that together and then of course we landed marcus wimberly out of arkansas put up that video and that's what Oklahoma needs, right? We need more of that stuff. We need, we need, I think he's going to be special at his size at 6'1", 200 and some pounds. He's a heavy hitter. He likes to hit and he, I mean, six, 38 inch vertical. He benching, you know, 315 pounds, like eight times, you know, he's squatting over 405, like eight to 10 times. He, he, he's, he's what we want to want to see. And so there's a lot more future guys on here from 26, 27 to 28 on here compared to 25, because we've got spring game coming up, which a lot of kids are going to be pulling up to. We've got the event in June, which I'm telling y'all that third weekend in June, the second and third weekend in June is going to be stupid. It's going to be stupid, busy. And your boy is ready for it, right? I, I'm uber excited about that and what that's going to look like. So want to drop this quick video. Told you I was traveling this week. Got stuff up. Hop in the comments. Let your boy know your thoughts. How y'all feeling about Oklahoma and this recruiting trail? Any particular player you see or heard about that got your attention that you would love to us talk about? You know, I'm always willing to do that for you all. You made it this far like the content. Please hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Subscribe. Love for you to join this family of college football fans. Talking all you football, college football, and SEC football. Having a blast doing it. All right. We got commitments this week. Keep your eyes open for that. We hope we get something big. Cross fingers and toes. And uh, yeah, we'll chop it up soon. Peace.